Today we're talking about hypocrisy. Act 5, verse 1 to 11. Someone once said to me, Nah, I don't go to church because church people are a bunch of hypocrites. On Sunday, they sit there with their pious faces and pretty words in church. And on Monday, they children of the devil. Nah, I can't identify myself with such hypocrisy. I don't go to church. Many Christians have caused far more harm to the church through hypocrisy than blatant unbelievers could ever dream of doing. Hypocrisy means pretending to live a terribly holy life while behind the scenes you are up to no good. On Sunday morning, you are the excellent, devout elder or serving Martha, an example of self-control and good manners. But during the week, you curse and shout at your employees at work where the church people don't see you. Then you are a completely different person. No, this is not an uncommon situation. It is, in fact, a very frequent occurrence. Luke tells the chilling story of Ananias and his wife, Sapphira. Just yesterday, we read about the close bond that had formed in the Jerusalem congregation and how the people cared for one another. It was truly an example of generosity, and no one in the congregation lacked anything because there was always someone to take care of them. But everything wasn't entirely above board. Some people pretended to be extremely generous, but were scheming behind the scenes. Why would they do that? Perhaps to appear far more holy than they really were. Ananias owned property, and when he saw the respect other believers earned for selling their property to generate money for the needy, he and his wife decided that this was exactly what they needed in life. If they were to sell this piece of land and give the money to the church, they would surely be seated in the front rows. In his mind, Ananias already envisioned himself being elected as a church leader. After all, he was the man who had sacrificed his hard-earned land for charity. Sapphira had already begun dreaming of the status she would suddenly have among the women. The property was sold and Ananias returned home with a bag full of money. Brimming with excitement, he emptied the sack into the, onto the table. Wow! I've never seen such a lot of money in one place, gasped Sapphira. We can't possibly give all this money to the church. Well then, what do you suggest? Ananias asked. That's why we sold the land. Let's keep some for ourselves. No one will know. Everyone will think we, have the f uh, we gave the full amount. It's not stealing, it's our own money, all right. And so Ananias set off jubilant with a tidy sum in his wallet and half a sack of money for the church. I've sold my hard-earned land, he told Peter. Here are the proceeds of the sale. Use it wherever it's needed. Peter read the man like a book, and in his heart he immediately knew that Ananias was lying. How could such a valuable piece of land have yielded so little money? Is this all you received for your land? 
he asked. Yes, brother, this is everything down to the last penny, everything I received. I give today for the Lord's cause. And then, yes, Peter asked with a heavy heart. Why have you let Satan deceive you into lying to the Holy Spirit? The rest of the story is bitterly tragic, for there, in front of everyone, poor Ananias dropped dead. The same fate befell Sapphira only three hours later. Don't mess with God. I write this devotion with trembling in my heart because I so often see Ananias and Sapphira in my own life. Yes, I am often a hypocrite myself, sometimes pretending to be far holier than I really am. Who am I fooling? The congregation where I am held in such high esteem? All those who read these devotions and think I'm such a holy, learned theologian. By the way, I'm not a minister, just an ordinary church member. No, by pretending to be something I'm not, I'm actually trying to lie to God. But that is entirely impossible. God knows me inside out. He is aware of every little sin in my life. He simply asks me to bring it to him and tell him that I'm sorry for it. He wants me to be honest with him. To summarize, always be honest with everyone you come into contact with. But it's also very important to be honest with yourself. However, the most important thing of all is that we are honest with God. Let's pray. Lord, so often I try to hide things from you, trying to present myself as someone I'm not. Oh Lord, please forgive me. Amen.